this is what I will talk about uh, uh, in the next uh, few minutes. Um, a research question is, uh, as we said uh, earlier in the previous session, that it is very important starting point for any research project. You have to identify a clear, answerable, uh, and direct question to be addressed uh, in your study. Now, there are some items that I would like to highlight uh, which identify a good research question. Uh, and uh, uh, th these are the items that I would like to talk about. One, for example, is what areas need further study. If a certain area does not need any further study, are you going to do a uh, research project on this? For example, if I'm talking about uh, smoking and lung cancer, you don't really need to, to have a new project that shows a relationship between smoking and lung cancer because it does not need any further study. So the point is, you have to identify whenever you are deciding on your research question, you have to decide on an area that is still lacking uh, 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 information or it's not well understood. If so, so in other words, if the area needs further study, uh, is there a room for improvement? Could you make a change? Could you make a difference through the, your study? In other words, if you carry out a certain research project in a certain area, do you think that your study will contribute to any improvement or not? Uh, you remember the gap that we talked about? So could my study fill a gap? So if you do not identify the gap in the knowledge and if you do not uh, uh, perceive, uh, and if, you do, if you do not think that your study that you're going to be doing is going to fill this gap, then it's not a, 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 a good uh, a research question. It is a statement that identifies the problem or situation or topic to be studied. So the research question or the objective of the study uh, uh, is a statement that identifies the problem. So you, there should be a problem. If there is no problem, there is no need for your study. There should be a problem or a situation uh, or a topic to be studied. Uh, research question is the basis for the development of a research proposal. If you do not have a clear research question, your whole proposal or the study or the uh, project is not uh, clear. Some people would do it the other way around. In other words, they would collect data on people, right? And they will uh, uh, start the analysis. And then when they start finding results, they will start reporting on questions that they think of while they are doing the analysis. This is not the proper way. Although, sometimes you might have registries. Uh, in other words, what is a registry? A registry is a collection of a huge number of patients, information about a huge number of patients, and then researchers might use the information from the registries to answer questions. But again, the, when you want to do, or when you want to take data from the registry to do a, uh, to, to do a, a research project, you have to have, again, a very clear, direct research question to be able to answer. So, this is very important. The research question is very important to be identified before you start the study. And finally, it's specific enough, it should be specific enough to be answerable and researchable. In other words, sometimes you might have a very interesting research question, but it's not answerable. You cannot answer it. With whatever resources that you have, you cannot answer it. So this makes it a very bad research question. So a good research question is a question that you can answer uh, uh, within your available resources and expertise and so on and so forth. Components of a question, the research question that you have to come up with have to have certain components. One of them is the population. In other words, what specific patient population will be studied? So are they MI patients? Are they uh, uh, diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, and so on and so forth? So it should be specific enough to identify the population you are going to carry out the study uh, on. The second thing, the intervention. Sometimes it's not an intervention, it's an exposure that you are interested in. Uh, what specific intervention or exposure of interest will be studied? In the previous example, when we were talking about uh, hematocrit level, it was the hematocrit level that I was interested in studying in association with mortality. So you have to have uh, uh, a piece uh, or, or an exposure or intervention that you want to link to a certain outcome. Comparison intervention, to, the, uh, to what alternative will the intervention be compared? In other words, am I ex uh, comparing, for example, uh, uh, the new drug with what? With the old drug and or uh, conventional drug or uh, placebo, for example? No drug at all and so on. 
Um, the outcome is very important to be clarified in the research question. For example, what do you hope to accomplish? Be precise and brief. Am I looking at mortality, at survival, at quality of life, at hypertension as an outcome, and so on and so forth. So you have to identify in the research question what are you looking for, and of course, the time. When will the outcome be assessed in relation to the intervention? Are you going to be doing a follow-up? So in other words, are you checking survival after five years or three years or 10 years and so on and so forth. So these are components that are very important to be incorporated in the research question when it is structured. The criteria of a good research question are the following. Relevance, the research question has to be relevant and I will talk about a few of them. Duplication, you should avoid duplication. You don't want to make exactly the same study as someone else. Uh, uh, which was published uh, before. Feasibility, a good research question should address a feasible uh, topic. So you should not come up with a question that it's not feasible, you cannot do it. Uh, political acceptability, because it will facilitate, facilitate a lot of uh, 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 problems in the, in the future. It should be applicable, it should be cost effective, the timeline should be uh, appropriate, and ethics, it should be ethical to carry out this research project. Relevance, what do we mean by relevance? Uh, how big is the problem? Uh, who is affected and how severe is the problem? So some, uh, sometimes it's very good to identify a research question where the problem is big and it affects a lot of people or a certain group of people <coughs> and it is a severe problem. This is why when you do the, your research project, the impact of the research project will be big, whereas if there is no problem and it does not affect a lot of people and the outcome is not severe, your project or your paper or your study will not make a big difference. This is why the more relevant your research question is, the better it will be. You have to avoid duplication. Previous studies should be reviewed, of course, because uh, when you are coming up with a research question, as I said earlier, the answer to this research question could be as simple as getting a paper from the literature reading it, and that, was, uh, th that should be it. So for example, you might be interested in uh, the prevalence of hypertension in the kingdom, right? So this is a very nice research question. But at the same time, if you start a research project, you might be surprised that some other people in the kingdom have carried out exactly the same thing, and it is established what's the prevalence of hypertension. So you do not need to spend a year doing this project to come up with this prevalence. Whereas you can just go to the literature and pick up a few articles and read them and you will be able to get the answer. Now, identify gaps in the knowledge because when you read the literature, again, as we talked before, you might say, well, the prevalence of hypertension uh, uh, is identified in Jeddah and the Medina, for example. But in Riyadh, there is no, nothing mentioned about the prevalence of hypertension. This is why it's important to do this study to identify the prevalence of hypertension in Riyadh, for example. Address disadvantages and limitations of other studies. When you do a literature review and you try to avoid duplication, you try to uh, uh, avoid the limitations that are carried out in other studies. For example, assume that the prevalence of hypertension is also carried out in Riyadh, right? You pick up the article, but you find that it is a very weak study. The sample size was very small or the way they assessed hypertension was not reliable, and so on and so forth. So it's not a duplication anymore, blacks. On the contrary, you are doing something that you will be building on the previous experience of people. So you will do a study or a research project that will avoid the problems or the limitations of the previous uh, studies. Now somebody might tell me, is duplication always bad? I will say no, of course. Sometimes it's very important to duplicate other studies for what reason? To confirm the results that were shown. In other words, if we say that, uh, if we find a clinical trial, and I will talk what clinical trial is about, uh, if we find a big study that showed the new drug is better than the old drug in treating hypertension, for example, right? Are we going to take this as an ultimate truth and count on it and change practice according to this uh, study? No, sometimes we, meet, we might need a duplication. Why? Because by chance, the first study could show that the new drug is better. But in fact, it's not the truth, right? So if another study came and duplicated the results, was able to find the same results, then it is a confirmation that the conclusion is good, 
right? If a third study comes and shows the same results, it's a further confirmation that the results are good. So basically, duplication is advisable, but not in all uh, cases. So you have to try to avoid duplication when, uh, when you are doing simple, basic uh, research. But for more advanced, uh, 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 more sophisticated research, you might need to duplicate some work. Feasibility. You have to look at your resources uh, 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 or the resources needed to carry out the study. In terms of manpower, how many people are helping you? Are you going to be the only person who are going to do uh, the study? Or you have a supervisor, for example, or you have five or six colleagues who are going to be helping you? Uh, and this uh, directly affects the sample size, for example. Because if you're the only one who are going to do the study, you cannot collect 1,000 or 2,000 people or patients, right? Uh, if you are maybe a group of 10 people interested in the same area, then you can do a multi-center study. So you can include more than one center or more than one hospital and so on. So how many people could be involved in the study? In terms of time, how long is it going to take the time? Because some studies might need 15 years to finish. For example, if you are doing uh, a study on, uh, let's say, uh, uh, smoking during pregnancy and uh, birth defects, uh, let's say, or uh, cancer in, uh, in, in, the, in the offsprings, okay? How long do you have to wait? Most probably you have to wait for 30 or 40 years. Why? Because you take people who are smoking, uh, smoking during pregnancy and you have to wait till the offsprings are old enough and they have the possibility or the chance to develop cancer and then you will assess the outcome. In this case, you have to wait for 30 years. So is it feasible? No, it might not be feasible. This is why you have to look at how long is it going to take me to do the study. Equipment, is there any equipment needed? And do you have the resources to get the equipments? And of course, the most important part is the money. How much money do you have? Uh, research is not done for free, right? You need uh, uh, money to collect data. You need money to put them into the computer to enter the data. You need uh, money maybe sometimes to reimburse patients. In some studies, you have to pay a little bit of money for patients to be included in your study. Uh, money is needed for data analysis. Money is needed for uh, publication, for presentations and conferences. So how much money decides, or, uh, uh, decides on uh, the feasibility of the study? Political acceptability, uh, interest and support of the authorities. It's better to pick up or identify a research question which is uh, uh, of a great interest and support of authorities. This will enhance the chance that the results of the study will be implemented. Because any study, unless it is implemented in practice, it's a waste, right? So it's good to pick up a question that is of interest and support so that whatever results you come up with, it will be implemented in the practice. If study required uh, to show that the government policy needs adjustment, one should involve the policymakers concerned in an early stage. So it's better to have somebody from the policymakers included in the, uh, as a co-author or a co-investigator in the study so that you will facilitate uh, the implementation of the uh, results of the study. Cost effectiveness, are the resources in terms of time, money, and manpower uh, that you are going to be investing in the study uh, worthwhile given the results that you expect? So with all the money that you will put, with all the time that you will, uh, uh, that you will invest in, and so on and so forth, do you expect the results will be worth putting all these? If not, you might consider changing the research question. What difference or change will, be, uh, will the findings of the study make to existing programs or interventions and so on and so forth? Timeline, are the findings available in time to be used for making the necessary decisions? And how urgently the results are needed in order to make a decision? Sometimes we have outbreaks. We have an epidemic outbreak, right? For example, the one that's going on uh, uh, nowadays in, in Europe about the E. coli. So, what you have to do is you have to make sure that if you want to do a study that the results will be in a short period of time so that change will uh, be implemented. So you have to make sure about the timeline, about how fast the results are needed.